Jesse, what are you doing? What? You're what? getting. This isn't game time. You're all uh, sweaty. Ready. Ready You're getting. Go. Oh, ready to go. Gosh, what? no. You need help. Jeez. Okay. There what? we go. Right. Does he look okay? You need all the help you can get. I tell ya. Hey guys, welcome into MLS Now. Along with Jesse, I'm Katie. We are getting you set for the second leg of the Eastern Conference Championship. And when you look at this one, the big news, will Thierry Henry play on turf? It's come out that he will play. And honestly, what's the difference? Technically, there's really not much of a difference. And the only player in MLS that I've ever seen who could really use it to his advantage was Marco Echeverri. He was so good with his left foot that he could put spin on the ball to help how the next player received it. But what it's really gonna come down to is when you play on turf, it's about a mentality because there are more bouncing balls, more 50-50, more duels. And in the end, will Thierry Henry be ready to now meet the demands of the game in those moments? And I think the only one that can answer that is Thierry Henry. Well, we've seen him play on turf, ironically, all in Portland. But the other big news, no BWP, which is just shocking with the way that it's all kind of played out. Yeah, it's unfathomable to me that this wasn't part of the discussion and preparation for New York, especially after Roy Miller They've was suspended. Yeah. yeah. He was suspended one game for yellow card accumulation and another for red card. So they've already been, been a part of this rule. So the fact that they weren't aware of it is, is strikingly odd to me. Maybe the one guy that's going to step up, uh, he's definitely impressed me throughout the playoffs, is Lloyd Sam. Yeah, yeah. I think that, first of all, New York should like the matchup of Sam against Tierney. And even if New England makes a switch, which I think they might, to play Alston, Lloyd Sam is a guy who found advantages in the last game, and I think he can find more advantages in the next game as well. Well, finding those advantages kind of play into Jesse's key to the match, presented by the all-new Kia Sedona. Let's see, how is this going to play out for Lloyd Sam? Well, here's a play of Sam against Tierney and and one of the things I want to show is as soon as he gets the ball New York should have a lot of confidence that in these one-on-one -on -one situations that he's gonna find space to either get a cross off or look for a shot and in those moments I think that New York should have players that are absolutely crashing in the box to yeah. be an option and even when you look at moving forward without BWP Cahill is effective in the box so this could be a way that they could continue to find chances and be dangerous. Here he goes one on two, and he winds up getting the shot off. But again, what if they were other guys joining in? Maybe the ball gets slipped across, and it's an easy goal, almost like Jermaine Jones' second goal for New England. Okay, so we want to see a more active Lloyd Sam for New England. How are they defending this, or how does this change what they should be doing in leg two? Well, I think one of the big keys for them is their defensive shape specifically with their block of eight, because New York is still pretty good at now moving the ball around, and I think that some of New England's aggressiveness now pulled them out of their spots at times yeah. and allowed for gaps. And to start with, I'll show the midfield line here, and Teal Bunbury's not even in the picture, but because it's so out of shape, it now puts pressure on the back line, and now, in this moment, Gonzalez feels like he has to step, and this affects their back line and gets a little bit out of shape, right? And so then it leads to them being able to find Thierry Henry out wide. He's able to deliver a ball in the box. And in this moment, your best player in the air defensively, Gonzalez, is nowhere to be seen to battle with Bradley Wright Phillips. And they got really, really lucky on this play not to give up yeah, a goal. Yeah, I was going to say, not to mention, nobody is within an arm shot away from Bradley Wright Phillips in the box. Absolutely. I mean, defensively, they're getting pulled all over the yeah, place. Yeah, yeah. And there's another play here where we can show later in the second half where, again, now Lloyd Sam has the ball here. Let's start with their back line in this moment, okay? So it's all pulled out and all over the place. And even again, when you look at their midfield line, it's even worse. So they've got to find a way to get balance because again, it, it, it allows the New York players who are creative and smart about moving in gaps to find chances. Yeah. And if they get pulled around too much like this in the next game, they could be in some trouble. Yeah, almost makes it easier for New York. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so another storyline, the cards, which I'm standing next to the guy who appreciates a physical game. In fact, the second on the Major League Soccer all-time fouls committed I'll list. I'll you right now. 477, right I believe I it. Mind. Arms up, box out. Is this going to be an even more physical game? I think it will be. One, the field's a little smaller. Two, it's on turf. Three, the weather won't be as nice as it was this day. It'll be a little bit colder, maybe rainy. 
and every player on the field has a foul to give because you can't get suspended in the final for yellow card accumulation. So I think as chippy and as physical as this last game was, I think the next game has even more potential to be more so. Which means you better be watching it, right? Well, we are definitely going to be watching it. You can catch all the action at Gillette Stadium, 3 p.m. Eastern kick on NBC Sports Network, also UDN, TSN2, and RDS2 in Canada. And as always, keep checking in right here at MLSsoccer.com for all your playoff coverage. <laughs> Watch out.